All right. A pleasant afternoon to the members of the media, to uh, Comrades Oil from Inland and Offshore Contractors Limited, former workers, and, um, on the, and to all my comrades of the Oil Fees Workers Trade Union and Trinidad and Tobago, pleasant afternoon. We have uh, gathered here as we are about to go upstairs to the Ministry of Labor um, to have the, what is the second rounds of conciliation. The first was postponed because the company refused to turn up for whatever reason. The reason why we ask you all here the media is to highlight a, a, what seems to be a growing trend that is taking place with employers and the employer class at this point in time. These employers, since the sending home of all petrochemical workers, many employers in the manufacturing sector, in the petrochemical sector, in the oil and gas sector, service companies and so on, they are, they are opting to send home workers under the rubric of retrenchment of surplus, surplus to labor and so on, sorry, surplus to labor and so on. This in itself, when in the case of recognized majority union status, when we examine the reasons and the company exposed us what are their well, what's their rationale most of it cannot stand any scrutiny what we are realizing in the main especially in south trinidad here most of these companies are engaging what we perceive to be union busting and in the case of inland and offshore contractors limited they would have sent home 110 workers in march of 2019 march this year these workers upon receipt of what is their termination letter under the retrenchment, the up to now, which is we are in September, going into October, going into Christmas, they have not received their severance money, their benefits. These are unionized workers. The OWT is a recognized majority union in this company. And rather than the company sit in good faith and discuss other options, because there are other options to retrenchment. What they did in, in, a, in a very harsh and calculated way, they sent home all the workers. Okay, you have done that. We are going to fight you in the court and so on. But at least honor your commitment in writing that you made to each individual worker and pay them their money. Yeah. There's one comrade who have, who, who, whose wife had triplets. Yeah, and the media, and I thank the media for highlighting that. Today, that worker has not received a cent after working some 10 to 15 years in that company. And, 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 and we are calling on the ECA, we are calling on the Chambers of Commerce and all of those to talk to your employer colleagues and let them know what they are doing is harsh and oppressive and it's wrong. Yeah. We are understanding that they are saying that they can't pay the workers because Petrotrin Legacy owes them money. Unfortunately, you should have thought about that before you send on the workers. And we are, we are reliably informed, and that because I'm in the media, I will say it is alleged that mm -hmm. the company, all they did is change the name, and they are operating still at Heritage Trin, former Trinma Operations, doing the same work that they used to be doing with some of the workers that they sent home. But even those said workers that have been re-employed on, 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 on one month contract and so on, they themselves have not been paid their severance. So we are calling on the Minister of Labor this afternoon here, on behalf of the executive of the Oil Fees Workers Trade Union and indeed our President General, to investigate this matter. Yeah. Employers cannot be doing work as this. You're already doing work as a disservice by firing them without cause and so on. But more than that, as you do that, pay the workers what you have committed to pay them in writing. Yeah. Pay, them the, pay them their monies, man. And I'm saying it is unfair and unjust for a worker who have committed himself. These workers were the, were the, were the comrades who would have been taken from former Trinma workers offshore to those platforms and those in those dangerous southwest waters and so on. These commerce have worked there, in some cases, 20 years, yeah. taking all that set of dangerous conditions, transporting workers, and to date, after that, that working for that company, this company at least could have, been had, could have had the decency and paid the workers what you committed in writing in their severance letter. We are calling on the minister this afternoon to intervene, to use your good office, ma'am, and investigate the claims that the union is making here this evening. We are going to follow the proper process. 
and that's why we need Ministry of Labor. But while the process is taking place, we have no control because if things don't work out here, we might have the, the next the next step is the is the court. We have no control on the on the schedule, the timetable of the court. But while this is taking place, 110 families are suffering because the sole breadwinner has been taken out of employment, and more than that, the little money that was offered has not been paid to date. Yeah. So we are saying, members of the media, that it is time there is a change in the way industrial relations are perceived. Industrial relations doesn't have to be this type of um, colonial, master-servant type of relationship. We are workers, we are not slaves. I say it again, we are workers, we are not slaves. Don't treat us like slaves. We worked for you. We gave you. We worked hard for you. Right? We built your company. We gave you all that money that you have now to enjoy yourself. And, that, and that's fine. You made big investment. All we are asking to you is treat us like citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who have rights under the, the various legislative the legislative provisions in the country and treat us as citizens and workers. Do not treat us as if we are slaves. Thank you very much.